What's poppin' YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Astro Finesse. It's your boy Lil Finesse Jiggy Hippie back with another video for y'all. In this video right here, we're gonna be talking about having different planets in the third house. And I'll pause for the cause. If you don't know how to find what is in your third house, if you don't know how to read your birth chart, if nobody puts you on as to why it's so important to look at your birth chart, to learn about astrology, even numerology, if you're just starting off your journey of self-love, self-knowledge, self-understanding, self-awareness, don't worry, I got you. There's a couple of videos. I'll put the link in the description. You have to watch them first to become hip to the knowledge of what I'm about to talk about right now. So if you look at your birth chart and you realize you have different planets in the third house, even if you have no planets in the third house, still good to know about what the houses represent. So moving on, this video is going to be for y'all that have third house planets. So without further ado, let's just get it popping, shall we? Now, first of all, let's talk about what does the third house mean? What does it represent in our birth chart? So the third sign of the zodiac is Gemini. So the third house represents Gemini characteristics, Gemini type things. And remember, it's in the first quadrant still. So this is the last house in the first quadrant of our personal identity. So this is where we begin to learn about how to communicate and to talk to people and the way we think. So third house, third house represents communication, the way we think, the way we speak. Also represents our immediate siblings and community community around us. Because remember, the opposite of third house is the ninth house, which is Sagittarius, which is traveling and going outside of our community. Third house is within our community, within our neighborhood, <clears throat> siblings, immediate people around us, and communication, and is rules ruled by Gemini. So now having your son in the third house, remember son is your ego. So your ego energy, your ego is gonna be tied into the way you speak. These people are really good at communicating. It's gonna be tied into how, how you can analyze things in a very quick manner. These people are always putting their hands in different baskets, that Gemini-esque quality. So your ego is gonna be tied into how good you can use your mind. These people love to be very intellectual and use your mind and analyze things and talk and communicate. So communication is really big for these people. Keeping yourself busy is also really big for these people. Having your son in the third house, your ego wants to wants to always move. Gemini always has to do something. So being restless and not doing nothing kind of gives you, kind of makes y'all antsy a little bit. <clears throat> At the same time though, Y'all love to communicate and y'all communicate very well. So use this to your advantage. A lot of times people will put their ego into how much they know, how many things they've learned, all these things they read. So these people really use their mind as in their, their, they use their mind as the weapon as that's what is the most important thing for them. Their ego is based off of how much they know, what they could say, who they know. These people are very social. So you love socializing and talking to people. So your son is, is basically, your ego is basically tied off of your immediate surroundings, your neighborhood, your community, your community, your siblings. So your environment, your immediate environment is what your ego is tied to, what your son is tied to. These people are really great at communicating, keep that in mind. So having your moon in the third house, which is your emotions being tied into your environment, into communication, into that third house Gemini energy, <clears throat> these people, really know how to communicate how they feel. A lot of times, it could actually go both ways actually because these people could either either think about what they feel too much when not feeling it, they'll really overly overly analyze their emotions as like not be able to express it out. So they'll overanalyze it, they'll think about it too much rather than being able to talk about it. Or these people will be extremely well at talking about their emotions and they could talk about their emotions a lot like these you will always know how they feel because they always express it out to you your moon your moon your emotions are going to be tied into the way you communicate with people around you so keep in mind that your environment really really determines how you feel and what you what you think about yourself your environment the people you surround yourself with your siblings your community your neighborhood you could have like a, a real strong tie a strong bond to your hometown to your the way the way you were raised where you were raised have like that strong moon cancer cancer um tied to how you were raised in your hometown but all in all though generally your emotions are tied into the way you can the way you feel and how you rationalize your emotions so it could either be really rational really logical one day 
And then another day could be very emotional decisions, very unpredictable decisions. It's like Gemini, you know, Gemini is two personalities, is that dual sign. So a lot of times your emotions can really like fluctuate up and down. You might not know how you feel, what you're feeling, like what's going on. So keep that in mind that you can have spurts of doing things rational one time and doing things very emotional one time. It's gonna be like that bouncing of being really rational, being really emotional. So keep that in mind, but basically, Y'all have your emotions tied into that third house energy, tied into the way you communicate. These people love to talk about their feelings. They love to talk to you about how you feel. You really like like to get in tune with people on emotional levels, communicative-wise, talking-wise. You can have a strong bond, too, with your siblings, with your hometown, with that immediate circle of your immediate environment. Now, having a Mercury in the third house, Mercury is at home here because Gemini because Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. So having the Mercury in the third house, it might seem like, oh man, I'm mad smart because I got the, the sign of our the sign of intelligence in the house of intelligence. Y'all are smart, but understand that Mercury is the fastest moving planet. Third house energy, Gemini energy moves fast too. So your mind can always be running to the max. Like this is this is the type of people that do not that cannot just, just lay, lay down and go to sleep. They have to play something in the background or they have to do something else to keep their mind from always moving to the max. So these people have a hard time focusing on one thing because they're always want to learn about this, they always want to learn about that. So these people are like the jack of all trades, the master of none kind of thing. Y'all can easily talk to anybody about anything. You could jump into any conversation because you know a little bit about everything. At the same time, you don't really have enough patience enough focus to kind of focus on one thing because your mind is always wanting to move so y'all are extremely analytical y'all are extremely communicative y'all are very communicative very good at talking to people socializing knowing what to say knowing how to use your words so understand that the, the biggest thing for this placement is knowing how to slow down a little bit try not to put too much things on your plate mentally because because remember your mind will always be moving mercury is always analyzing things it's in the house of gemini it's, it's going to always be constantly moving so try to try to find ways meditation slowing down a little bit or just being consciously aware of the fact that it's going to be hard for you to focus on one thing so actually consciously make yourself like all right so i want to learn this thing i'm gonna actually focus on this one thing because y'all will get easily bored when it comes to learning something because you want to go to the next thing because after that you get your your curiosity peaks and you learn about something for a little bit then then it kind of dwindles down and you go to the next thing and you go to the next thing so keep in mind that it's going to be hard for you all to focus on one thing but generally you're going to be really good at communication you're going to be really good at thinking things through doing things mentally you have like a really big mental you have really strong mental powers when it comes to analyzing things and seeing the details and multitasking to the max. Y'all are extremely well at multitasking. Just don't go overboard with it and do too many things at once because then your mind will just be always, your mind will go crazy low key. These people really need to learn how to meditate and really like, you know, relax a little bit, listen to music and just chill out just a little bit because your mind will always be moving. So now having, um, having your Mars in the third house, Mars is a planet of action, planet of war, planet of aggression, planet of directness. So these people, when you speak to Mars in a third house person and you're like emotional, emotion, emotional, and you're a lo little bit weak, these people can really intimidate you by the way they speak because y'all speak directly, straight to the point. Y'all could be a little impulsive when you're talking. Y'all could have impulsive thoughts and do these thoughts, do things impulsively because the third house also generates the way you think and how you think. So you can really be impulsive with what you're thinking, impulsive with what you're saying. So be careful not to be too harsh with your words because understand that people around y'all might not be as tough mentally as you, might not be as direct as you, might not be as, as in your face as you when it comes to communication wise. Also, like I said, third house rules the siblings and neighborhood and immediate environment. So be careful not to always catch yourself fighting because Mars is the planet of action and fighting. Fighting with your siblings, fighting with your neighbors, fighting in your media environment, fighting with your friends. So just keep in mind that your combative nature is gonna be through the way you speak. So really be aware of what you're saying, how you're saying it. But these people are really good at, <clears throat> when it comes to action, 
because Gemini rules the hands and the lungs, so really good at using their hands. So working in something like mechanic-wise, drawing, writing too is good for y'all. Anything that has to do with working with your hands is a really good placement, is a really good profession for this placement because Mars is all about that action. So keep in mind though, like I said, y'all could be a little bit aggressive to people when you're speaking to them. When, when you talk, they'll, they'll respect y'all because cause you have this commandment kind of energy when you speak. It could be really direct and in your face. So people that are weaker than you or people that are more emotional will be intimidated by y'all. So keep that in mind that you actually don't push people away by being too aggressive, be, being too in your face, being too combative, always fighting all the time with your words and with your speech. And be aware of the impulsiveness of the actions you take because your mind will be always wanting to do something on an impulsive manner. Mars is very impulsive. Mars is all about doing something right now and action oriented. So keep that in mind with this placement. So now having a Venus in the third house, very similar to having a Venus in Gemini. You can go check out that video for more information on this, but your the planet of love is gonna be in the house of Gemini. So automatically you already know that these people in relationships especially need that mental stimulation. These are the ult ultimate sapiosexuals of the, the house placements of the Venus placements. They need that mental stimulation. They need a partner they could talk to that is really good at communicating. If you're the type to not be good at communicating, not be good at talking, hiding your feelings, don't know how to express yourself and say what you want, say how you feel, people with the Venus in the third house will look at you and they'll be so, they'll just be so bored quickly first. They'll be just like, what are you doing? Like, why can't you talk? Why can't you use your words? They need that mental stimulation. They need to know how to. They need to know that you know how to communicate. At the same time, Venus is in the third house. Everywhere Venus goes, it kind of makes them more beautiful, it makes them more graceful, it makes them more Venusian. So these people have very beautiful voices. Y'all could be the type to be really good at using your words to get what you want. That finesse factor. You're really good at knowing how to knowing what to say, knowing how to get people to like you through your words, knowing how to like you know manipulate low key with your words. Y'all could be really good at getting what you want through the way you communicate. So keep that in mind that you don't use this on a negative, use this on a, like, um, use this to, for your advantage by taking advantage of somebody else. But at the same time though, just know that you need in relationships or you need in partnerships, a partner that knows how to communicate. That's the biggest thing for y'all. Y'all cannot be in no boring relationships because that's what makes y'all restless and want to do something else. A lot of times y'all like variety in love and relationships. Y'all need to have like, you know, I'm not saying y'all need to have two partners at the same time, but y'all generally like variety. So some advice for y'all, if you want to have that one partner, like have that partner, but then have other interests at the same time. That also keeps your mind stimulated and keeps your mind focused because it's not always your partner's job to keep you stimulated all the time you can also have your own interests own hobbies your own thing that keeps your mind stimulated because y'all always need to constantly be stimulated mentally so have that partner but then have hobbies or have other friends or do something else that keeps you in that third house stimulating energy because if you don't you will be bored and when y'all when y'all are bored y'all take no time y'all take no breaks and y'all just be out and doing your own thing because y'all just love to yeah, I just love to mingle, very mingling. This is like a very mingling social kind of energy. Y'all could be flirty too without even knowing it because y'all just generally love to talk to people. Y'all generally very, people generally like you when they talk to you because you're really good at speaking and all that in a very, you know, likable way, likable manner. Just keep in mind though, these people that are dating, Venus and third house people, you have to be smart intellectually. You have to know how to communicate. You have to know how to use your words know how to talk and actually, you know, say how you feel and all that. Cause they actually admire people that know how to speak how they feel. Cause they're really good at speaking and they need that constant stimulation. So keep that in mind. So now having a Saturn in the third house, you already know wherever Saturn goes, Saturn makes it difficult at first, early childhood. So having your Saturn in the house of communication, in the house of your mind, how you think, in the house of your siblings, in the house of immediate environment, these people growing up early on definitely had struggles when it came to communicating, when it came to speaking, have like speech impediments, low key sometime. This is very similar to having, um, this is very similar to having Saturn and Gemini too, but these people have had a hard time growing up expressing themselves. So on the outside world, people might look at y'all, might think that you're dumb or you're not smart. The thing is that 
those people, you're probably even more smarter than them. The thing is that Saturn forces you to actually slow down and think about what you're saying. Y'all could be afraid to say things because you don't want to sound stupid. So y'all are always constantly in your head thinking about the way you the way you speak, what to say, how am I, how am I talking? So a lot of times because of this, y'all don't say nothing at all. Y'all just stop talking and you're always in your mind. So your mind is very, your mind works over time in a very, very perfectionistic manner, but you're always working in your mind. The only thing that's hard for y'all to do is to get that mind and to express it out. So earlier on growing up, you could have had um, situations where when you wanted to speak up for yourself, you got shut down. When you wanted to speak up, when you wanted to say something, you didn't get listened to. So then you became hard on yourself. You became pessimistic on yourself. Saturn kind of makes everything pessimistic, makes you overthink, makes you makes you become hard on yourself, down on yourself a little bit with this one thing, this one aspect, which is communication. But the thing is that because y'all are so focused on how you speak, you're always so worried about what you're saying, you're always so interested about communication wise because you because you feel like, damn, I'm so dumb or I'm not smart because I'm not always talkative like that because of this. As time goes on, as you become more mature, as you're constantly working on these things and naturally because you're always, like I said, y'all are really smart. Like y'all are actually, the quiet person in the room is always usually the smartest person. Think about that because their mind is always working. So y'all are usually always using your mind. But as you get older, as you get more mature, it comes from not being able to express yourself through speech and communication to actually becoming a master at communication and speech. So it becomes so you become that from that quiet person in the room, and as you get older, you become that master at speaking. Because your whole life you've been struggling with this, your whole life you've been analyzing yourself and being critical on yourself. So as you master this energy of speaking, when you get older, when your Saturn return comes around, you be asked yes, you master becoming being able to talk and being able to speak. So keep that in mind that people that have Mercury in the third house are not dumb at all. They're not stupid. They're not slow. It's just they have a hard time getting their mind to work through expression outwardly at first. But the more you work on these things, understand that you will become a true master at knowing how to speak. And you'll be really, you'll be proud of yourself as time goes on. Like, damn, before I was, I was so quiet. I was so nervous. Like, even though I had the smartest thing to say, I didn't want to say nothing because I didn't want to sound dumb. But now I can actually talk and I, I can, I can uh, and I could communicate well and I could express myself easy. It's like y'all go through the rags to riches when it comes to speaking and communication. As you learn about yourself and as you gain the confidence and as you become more aware of communication and knowing how to speak and express yourself, Saturn will lift its its, uh, its boundaries off of you and you actually become a master, like I said, at speaking and communicating. So y'all are not dumb. Don't ever think that you're, you're not smart. You're actually extremely smart just don't know how to express it outwardly yet. But as time goes on, you will learn that you're, you're actually extremely, ex- obses- exceptionally well at speaking. So now having a having Neptune in the third house, very similar to having Neptune, having a Mercury in Pisces, these people, when it comes to their communication, they really they really dig deep emotionally and intuitively when they're, when they're talking to you. They can read, you on a deep intellectual, not intellectual, but a deep spiritual level in the deep. They can read your body language. They can hear your tone of voice, see how you're saying, how, they can see how you're saying things, what you're saying. These these people really have a more spiritual way of expressing themselves, a more spiritual mind. So understand that Neptune rules Pisces and Pisces have no boundaries sometimes. So you could, you could find it hard to separate yourself, your mind from somebody else you're talking to. A lot of times you could put yourself in that person's shoes and you can you can kind of think how they think you can really merge your mind with somebody else and you could have you could put their problems into your mind in a way so understand that y'all need to understand how to set boundaries for yourself when it comes to the mind and thinking for somebody talking to somebody and always putting your and, and taking their bag and taking their baggage and putting it on top of yourself so understand that this energy really knows how to read things on a spiritual, in a spiritual way, in a very intuitive way. So your intuition is a one. It can be hard for y'all sometimes to really be detail oriented, as in like dotting the uh, <laughs> dotting the i's and crossing the t's. So be careful, like when you're signing things, contracts, you, that you actually sit down and actually 
read over it a lot of times because when it comes to things that are practical and really to the point and perfectionistic in a way, Neptune kind of makes it hard to really figure it out, makes it hard to pinpoint it because it's all about delusions and illusions. So really be careful that you don't do things in this reality without fully thinking through because y'all could be the type to always be daydreaming, always be, your mind can always be in the, in the spiritual realm. Neptune makes, makes you go in the spiritual realm. And when you have that spiritual realm energy in the sign of communication and in your mind, that's what makes y'all more susceptible to be taken advantage of, makes y'all more susceptible to making like small mistakes as in signing contracts, especially doing things like that. When it comes to putting your mind and making logical decisions, y'all can make more emotional decisions because Neptune is all about the spiritual, the spirituality of life, the emotions of life. But these people are really intuitive, very in tune with your energy. When you're talking to you, when they're talking to you, they can really feel your energy and they really know how to understand you on a intuitive emotional level so understand that you have to set boundaries for yourself so you don't put somebody else's baggage on top of yours that's the biggest thing for this placement know how to separate your thoughts your mind your energy with somebody else so not having uranus in the third house uranus you already know is a planet that rules aquarius so it's all about that unpredictability that's not really go that goes against the grain all the time so having Uranus in the third house, these people, when you're saying things, when you think, first of all, first of all, the way you think is gonna be always against the grain and outside the box. Y'all are always thinking of ways to do something different. Y'all are tight to be saying things that's mad. <laughs> this is mad different, mad weird and eccentric. Y'all just say things that people like do a double take, like, what'd you say? Like, what was that? Y'all just like to go against the grain with what you say and how you think. So keep this in mind though, because your mind will always like to create innovative ideas. Your mind is always working to do things innovatively, do things different, do things unpredictably. But also with displacement, your mind can always be fluctuating. Your mind can always be going from, from, this, from this thought to that thought quick, fast. So this also, y'all also need to learn how to slow down a little bit, learn how to meditate, know how to like, you know, not kind of, not, not do things off the cuff because Uranus just likes to be unpredictable a lot. So you can never know what that person's gonna say. You can never know what that person is thinking. What that person that has the Merc that has the Uranus in the third house. But understand that their mind is gonna always be in the mode of wanting to do wanting to have freedom do their own thing. So keep in mind having Uranus in the third house that your mind is gonna always want to be wanna go against the grain. So you could always be type to always want to argue a lot just to be the devil's advocate, always want to go against the grain, always wants to do something complete, completely opposite from what people around you are doing. So Uranus is going to make you very unpredictable in nature with the way you speak and the way you think. The plus for this is that y'all can have amazing, innovative ideas about anything that you want, anything that you want to create. Y'all can have true, innovative ideas about doing this and can carry it out because y'all actually have the, the ability to do things your own way, to think things your own way, to express yourself in your own way. Y'all love to express yourself individualistically, that Aquarius energy, that, that, Aquarius energy, that Uranus energy. Now having Pluto in the third house, these people, first of all, you do not like small talk. Pluto makes everything intense, makes everything serious, makes everything makes, makes everything to the point and underneath the surface, to the core and to the truth. So these people have a talent of picking things apart and really digging deep to figure out what, what's going on. Y'all really don't like to take things for surface value. Y'all actually go deep and actually care about what's really going on underneath the surface. So keep in mind with this placement, because everything Pluto does, it kind of makes it more intense and more obsessive low key. So keep in mind that y'all can have a lot of obsessive dark thoughts. So be aware that you don't really put your, put so much emphasis on what's inside your mind and all these dark obsessive thoughts, because that can kind of drive you crazy a little bit. But understand that y'all generally love to obsess over something and pick it apart and find a true core truth of it. Y'all go through a lot of internal transformations when it comes to the mentality of what's going on in your life. Y'all can go through y'all can go through transformations with your with your um siblings and your neighborhood, your friends, and your, with your immediate environment. But all in all, though, these people you cannot lie to them because they really know how to read between the lines and underneath the surface. So keep in mind the obsessive dark thoughts that could happen because Pluto makes everything more intense and and scorpionic and more dark. So keep that in mind for its placement. And I lastly having Jupiter in the third house. 
first of all, if you have Jupiter in third house, I fuck with you on an even deeper level because this is what I have. But Jupiter, everywhere Jupiter goes, it expands it. It makes it more, it makes it more expansive. It kind of gives us that luck factor. So having your Jupiter, the planet of luck in the house of communication, we kind of, we are really good at preaching and teaching and talking to people in a very enthusiastic, in a very optimistic kind of way. So we could really, we could really talk in a really, really grand and dramatic way. But generally, we're really good at knowing how to think about things in a, philosoph in a phil philosophical way and to preach to people about this thing. So if you have this placement, put yourself in positions to actually teach people. Remember, Sagittarius is a teacher, Gemini is a student. So you have that teacher energy and a student helps. So we are students of life and we're really good at teaching this and preaching to people. Keep in mind though, we can low key gloss over details when we're talking. Keep in mind that we can low key over exaggerate a little bit when we're talking. As you can see, low key when I talk, I can over exaggerate things a little bit. But generally, all in all, Jupiter in the third house, we should be really, we should be really tied into our mind can really be tied into thinking that we have to travel all the time, thinking that we have to go outside of our community. Our mind can really, our mind can really transcend and go to a lot of different places because Jupiter just wants to expand and travel. We could really be good with our words and having that gift of gab energy. So understand with this placement, put yourself in positions to actually use your speech, use your communication, whether it's writing, whether it's talking, use that for your advantage, use that to teach people, to help people, to put people on to philosophies of life because all we care about, all we like to learn about is philosophy of life. That's what we really care about. So having a stellium in the third house means that in this lifetime, you're gonna be more focused on communication. You're gonna be more focused on the sibling energy, the environment energy, your immediate surroundings, short-term travel. Your focus in this lifetime will be based off of your intelligence, the way you speak, having different varieties of different things to do for yourself, being restless and always wanting to put your hand in different baskets. So what this, so what this stellium means that you're really good at using your words. So use that to your advantage. Use this to help people and talk to people and socialize and put people on and teach people things. But generally having your communication heightened with the stellium in the third house means that your mind will always be working. So really be careful not to overthink things too much. Really be careful not to put too many things on, on your plate, too many things to put too, <laughs> put too many hands in different baskets. But generally in this lifetime, you're going to be focused on communication. You're going to be focused on using your mind. You're going to be focused on your media environment, you're gonna be tied, you're gonna have that strong core energy, that strong core tied to your childhood and to your hometown, like to your immediate environment when it comes to that placement. So that was my video on third house. I hope y'all enjoyed that. My next video is gonna be talking about the planets in the fourth house and you already know I'm about to go in. If you have subscribed to my channel, appreciate all y'all for real, for real. If you haven't subscribed yet though, go ahead and handle that one time for your boy. Don't forget to drink your water, mind your business, and be safe out here. It's your boy, Lil Finesse Jiggy Hippie. I'm going to see all y'all when I see y'all.